Welcome to the Therapy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard. In each episode, I interview a seasoned and knowledgeable talk therapist from the counseling world to glean valuable insights, techniques, and tools that you can apply to your practice and your life. And if you're considering a career in the counseling field or just want to hear about what it's like to be a talk therapist, then this is the podcast for you. Have you ever thought about writing a book? Have you considered self-publishing? Because I'm raising my hand and waving it wildly over here. So when I came across Dr. Emmy Vita Estacio and her self-publishing made simple process, I was more than intrigued. Emmy is a chartered psychologist in the UK and founder of The Pain Code. She is the number one best-selling author of the Psychology and Your Life book series, including titles such as The Imposter Syndrome Remedy, Change Your Life for Good, and Fear is Not My Enemy. She is also now helping coaches and therapists write and publish their own books with her flagship course, Self-Publishing Made Simple. And in this episode, she shares her story from lecturer and researcher to a best-selling author, how she supports and coaches others to self-publish, and tips to get you started on writing your future number one bestseller. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hey friend, want to be more comfortable while sitting on the therapy couch? I sure did and went looking for pants and tops that were soft, wrinkle resistant, and would match just about anything I already had in my closet. And now Zaya Active makes up about 80% of my wardrobe. Would you like to learn more? Head over to my site, lisamuster.com and click on the activewear tab. And don't think this is just for women. They have men's and kids clothes too. And our family is loving the quality and I am loving the price tag. So head over to my site to check it all out. So hey, everyone, welcome to another episode of The Therapy Show. I'm your host, Lisa Mustard, and Dr. Emmy Vida Estacio is my guest for this week. Welcome to the show. So oh, great it's to so have great you. to be here. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Oh, you're welcome. And I love to tell folks where I connect with people. So you and I connected in a Facebook group for podcast guesting connections, I, I guess, and and I saw your your post and I was like, oh, wow, this sounds fascinating. A psychologist turned self-publisher. So I can't wait to hear more about your story. So uh, would you mind telling us a little bit about who you are and, and how you got to where you are today? Oh, of course. Essentially, I've been a psychologist for more than 20 years. I'm a chartered psychologist and I've been a university lecturer for all that time. And I love teaching. I love psychology. I love doing research. I love the interaction with the students. But there came a point where I felt as if it wasn't enough for me. Mm -hmm. There was a point where I know that I could do so much more. So even if I had a a string of um, research publications, you know, as an academic, we do this as us as research psychologists, you know, I have textbooks and all that. It's all academic. And it felt as if I was only serving those in academia and the students, you know, who want to learn about psychology. But because I know that psychology can be applied in so many aspects of our lives, I want to make psychology more accessible to the public. And I thought, okay, I know how to write books. I can write books. But I figured that if I went down the traditional route, I know that it's going to take forever. Hmm. I know that it's going to take two years before it gets published. And then every time I, I need to update it, it takes another two years. So I know what it's like going down the traditional route. And I know that there's an option to go the self-publishing route. That scared me a little bit because I know how to write, but I certainly don't have the background in terms of, you know, the marketing. How do I get my editor, my cover designer, the the distribution and all that? So that terrified me. But as a psychologist, I know how to manage my fear. (laughs) You know, I just took it a step at a time and I identified my fears and I made it constructive. I knew what I was missing. I knew what I was lacking in terms of skill and and ability. So I educated myself on how to self-publish a book. And it turns out that it's not really that complicated, especially now that we have Amazon. You know, before Amazon existed, you need to um, look for a printer. You need to apply for your ISBN to sort out your distribution and so on. But with Amazon they can handle all of that for you. All you have to do is to upload your book on there 
and they deal with the distribution they will deal with the printing you know handling the money because i i don't really want to take people's bank details it's just too much responsibility so you know amazon takes care of that so it was actually simpler than I expected. But ultimately, because I don't want to write books and then let it disappear on Amazon because there are 7 million books on there, I don't want to spend a lot of time and energy writing a book and people not really finding it. I don't want my books to flop. So I want my books to be accessible. I want people to read it. So I need to learn how Amazon works. I educated myself And I learned how to do it. And for the three books that I launched in the Psychology in Your Life series, I managed to get to number one bestseller every single time during launch week. And people have asked me, how did you do it? And I said, well, there is a sequence that I follow. I created the course. I'm helping people one-to-one. And every single time, I have a 100% success rate. Every single one of my students get to number one best. Okay, I can be hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, it's my way or the highway. You have to follow the sequence because if you skip some steps, it's not going to work. Right. So I hope I answered your question. I know that's yeah. a really long answer, but yeah, that's where I am now. I started as a, as a psychologist, university lecturer, really wanting to, to do more and serve more people. We know how psychology can be applied in so many aspects of our lives. So I want psychology to be more accessible. I wrote self-help books, you know, self-published books. Now that I understand how the process works, I'm helping other coaches, more mostly coaches and therapists, business owners who also want to share their expertise, but really make it a, have a successful launch on Amazon so their books will be seen and, and read by the people who need to read their books. So yeah, so that's wow. where I am now. That's just so neat. It gets me so excited. You know, I love how you said that, and because I love it because it's, it's how I feel is, you know, if you want to make a larger impact, you know, if you, if you're ready to pivot and as a therapist or coach, and you're looking for another way to make an impact, you know, you're tired of the lecturing or you're tired of the one-on-one counseling and not to say that there's not value in those things. It's just, you're at a point in your career where you want to pivot and take your skills and your strengths and do something different. So I find this Fascinating. So you said you have published three books and they're in a series, a psychology in your life series. Is that correct? That's correct. So I have the Change Your Life for Good, Imposter Syndrome Remedy, and Fear is Not My Enemy. So what I like about that is even if I actually do have my books, I end up still talking about these topics. Um, You know, I get invited in podcasts, speaking engagements, and and because I've written a book and have reached number one best-selling status, I get more credibility as a result of that. You know, I bring my books with me all the time and people get fascinated that that it's available in several formats, you know, in print, Kindle, and audiobook versions. So I record my own audiobooks so people can actually hear my voice narrating my books. And in terms of the psychology practice, I get clients that way because they read my book. I usually offer like a freebie inside my book. So whether it is a workbook, a meditation guide, or what have you, they download the the freebies, but they have to sign up to my mailing list. And I nurture them in in the mailing list. They get to know me. And for those who actually do need one-to-one support, or who would like to sign up to my group programs as a psychologist, they do that because they, they already know, like, and trust me because they've already read my book. So it's, it's fantastic. I absolutely love it. It is. You're speaking my language. You, I mean, you and I are like, oh, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, so tell me, okay, so I'm curious about your online course and how you help folks take from idea to publishing. How long of a process is that usually for someone who's brand new to this? Oh, sure. So I actually do have a, a, an online course that is self-paced. Okay. Some people can, can do it in a week if, they, you know, if they're so highly motivated. But what I've noticed is that for those who buy my online course, it takes them about six months to eight months simply because they are busy and they are taking their time in terms of writing and, and publishing their book. But 
I want my students to be held accountable. So I, I had the feeling that maybe an online course is not enough. So I set up the 12-week Get It Done Challenge where we all start at the same time. The next cohort is actually going to be on the 24th of June. So we start at the same time. And over the 12-week program, we take it a step at a time. So in the first week, we do our keyword research, our market research, really understanding your purpose and, and understanding why you are writing your book. Because when you understand your purpose, it's going to help you to power through. Writing a book is a mammoth task. And if you think that, okay, I can write, that's easy, no problem. There's another stage where you actually do have to publish it <laughs> and market it. And that's a completely different ball game. So when I when I put together the 12 week get it done challenge, my aim really is to bring people together so they don't feel alone mm -hmm. when they have any questions because we also have weekly group coaching in there. So every time they have a block or if there's something that they're not sure of, they can be reassured that they are not alone. And sometimes I know that some students are shy, that they don't really want to ask the question and somebody else asks it for them. You know, they are reassured that they have the same questions and they have the same challenges and you know we, we help each other and cheer each other on as they move through the program so in week one we identify your keyword in market research and and understanding your purpose and for me this is absolutely crucial because when I was writing my first book as a psychologist, I can write about anything, really. It's so broad. Okay. There's so much stuff that we can write about. But when you have the when when you do the keyword research, when you do the market research and really understand what your readers are looking for, you understand their pain points, what are their their needs, their goals, their aspirations, their frustrations. And when you understand that and go through the keyword research process that I teach inside the course you will find exactly what people are putting on the Amazon search bar, mm. right? So it's not as if they're walking into a bookstore, wandering around and, and see books, right? With Amazon, you go onto Amazon and you type keywords because you're looking for something, you have a problem and you're looking for a specific book based on what you need at that time. So the keyword research is when we look for these high traffic keywords we identify what people are putting on the Amazon search bar so we can refine our books to make sure that what we are writing would serve the needs of our readers. Because I know, for example, I have a, a lot of students who would like to write about their life story. Mm -hmm. You know, they've experienced uh, sexual abuse. They've gone through all sorts of trauma in their lives. And they want to share their story to show inspiration that there is hope, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And, and that's absolutely wonderful. But if you don't know why someone would read your story, you know, especially if you are unknown, nobody knows you, why would they be interested in reading your book? Your book would just drown in the sea of books on Amazon. I've seen so many self-published authors with fascinating life stories that just disappear on Amazon because people aren't really interested about their story. It's not as if they, they have nothing to say. It's right. just that they haven't really pitched it well to the reader. So from week one, we really try to understand it from the perspective of the reader. So for example, if you are someone who was sexually abused and you want to share your story as an inspiration to others, when you type in the keyword um, research sexual abuse, you might see that there are 4,000 searches, keyword searches on, on that word per month. And you can use that in your subtitle. So it could be um, recovering from sexual abuse and finding freedom and hope or something like that. Right. So you, you have to think about what it is for the reader. Mm -hmm. You may be interested in something. You might be motivated to, to write about something. But from week one, we identify the market's need. We identify these uh, high traffic, low competition keywords and use that to, to create your outline, to direct you and, and help you to focus on, on what key aspects people are looking for when they go to um, search for a book on Amazon. So that's what we do in week one. Week mm -hmm. two, we help you to create your outline. I find this fascinating because for me as an academic, that's easy. That's almost like 
second nature to me. You know, before I start writing a book, I would create my outline because if I don't know what the structure is like, if I don't know what topics I'm going to cover, I'll be completely lost. But what I found interesting is that many of my students don't have that natural tendency to create an outline. You know, they were asking me, how, where do I start? How do I structure this? And for me, I find that really interesting now that I'm interacting with them through the Get It Done Challenge. If I just left it as an online course where you do it on your own, I, I wouldn't know that some people would struggle with creating an outline. But now that it is a, a group thing, you know, we, we go through the process step by step, I can see that some things that are easy for me are not necessarily easy for others. And, and one of the things that some students struggle with is how do you create an outline? How do you make the chapters flow? What should you focus on? What should you get rid of? So for example, there are people who would like to write about everything. <laughs> you know, they don't know what area to focus on. And, and one of the things that I tell them is, look, if you want to write about all of these topics, and I'm not going to stop you if, if you want to write about all of these, you can consider writing a book series. Mm. So that's why I ended up with the Psychology in Your Life series because I wanted to write about imposter syndrome. I wanted to write about fear. I wanted to write about changing old habits. I even wanted to write about procrastination and, and you know, um, allocating workload and, and so on. You know, for all the control freaks out there, how do you let go of control? Right. Things like that. But I couldn't write everything in one book so th one of the ways to resolve that is thinking about a book series. So in week two, when we try to form the outline, we think about, okay, how is this book going to look like? And if you want to write so many things, you can consider creating a, a book series, maybe have three to five books in your series. So each book is bite-sized. For a lot of readers on Amazon, they just have a very specific problem and they want a very specific solution. And if they can see that your short read book is going to solve their problem, then that would be uh, quite easy. And if they can see that you have several, several books on your book series and they are interested in that, they might end up buying the entire series if they want to. So wow. week two is about creating the outline. Mm -hmm. Once you have the outline, we spend four weeks writing the book every single week. We keep each other accountable. Some people would have a, a goal of 500 words a day or something like that. And every week, we, we check on each other to make sure that they are making progress. Now, you might be thinking, how is it possible to write a book in just four weeks? You know, And that goes back to what I said earlier, that if you are writing a book series, Typically, the students in my Get It Done Challenge would be writing a book of about fifteen to 20,000 words. So that's about 5,000 words a week. And if you are writing 1,000 words a day over five days in the week, that's really what you need, right? So mm -hmm. it can be done. And especially if you already know your topic, if you're already the expert in, in that particular topic, it will be quite easy to write your book over that four-week period. So the first half of the Get It Done Challenge really is helping you to identify your topic, helping you to understand what your readers need, what your readers are looking for, how you can serve them with your expertise. But at the same time, we help you to narrow down your focus, help you with your outline. And for four weeks, you know, we keep you accountable and help you to write your book over that period. After the sixth week, we, we switch our caps, you know, we, we, we shift gears, and then we put our publishing hat on. Because for me, I, I tell my husband this all the time, the writing for me is the easy part. Mm -hmm. I know my stuff. I know my, I know psychology. That's easy for me. Writing it is easy for me. It's the publishing that I found quite tricky and I had to learn it. And now that I've done it several times and I've helped so many other authors write their books and publish it, I know the process now inside out when, uh, you know, I help them to create their title and subtitle, their cover, you know, what kinds of covers would work and what would flop, how to do your category research, how to format the book, editing, proofreading, and even building your launch team. 
Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I've seen new authors make, and, and I still see this in, in some people inside my free group, you know, they, they don't sign up to my course and they do it on their own. I, I, I can see them making the mistakes. And what, what they would do is they would publish their book. Fantastic. It looks great. But they are not prepared to launch. They haven't really followed the sequence to successfully launch their book. So they would publish their book. And then they would scramble on social media asking everyone to buy their books. Their family and friends will support it. That's really not enough. And I tell my students, look, you can see all these other authors publishing and asking for help after they've published. That's a mistake because you actually should have prepared two weeks in advance and asked for help even before you published your book, Mm -hmm. if if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's... You're organizing your launch team. You're organizing the support even before you publish. So by the time you publish, all of the things that need to be in place would already be there. So when you launch, it's a full launch. You know, you are ready. You you have a strategy. And that's the difference between those authors who know what they are doing and for those who are just, you know, finding their way and figuring it out. There's no harm in that. You, You can learn from your experience, but you don't really need to reinvent the wheel. If there's already a launch sequence that works, all you have to do is to replicate it. Learn from those who have done it before. Mm-hmm. And if you can add something to it, that's great. But you know, if something is already working, then you can just follow it and, and follow the sequence and, and launch your book uh, to number one bestseller on Amazon. How exciting. Oh my gosh, she just took me through the entire 12 weeks and I can definitely see the step-by-step and the process and you have have figured it out. Hey guys, I want to tell you about a group I've created on Facebook. It's called the Talk Therapist Lounge and it's a place where we talk therapists can find podcast guest opportunities. That's right. If you're a licensed talk therapist and you are looking to grow your reach and visibility, this group may be a place for you to start. I'm working to bring in podcast hosts who are wanting to interview licensed clinicians that can share their expertise and knowledge with their audiences. Why should you be a guest? That's a really good question. Let me tell you, people are crawling all over the internet, listening to podcasts and watching videos on mental health issues. My mission is to help spread the word about mental health treatment and help lower the stigma around mental health. And to do that, we need to get you guys out there sharing your knowledge, sharing your wisdom, and how you help people live their best lives. And it may help grow your brand and visibility and possibly help you gain new clients. I also share how to create a podcast guest one sheet and tips and ideas for getting yourself booked on shows. So will you come join us? Look for the Talk Therapist Lounge on Facebook. I hope to see you there. And I'm guessing... So many therapists struggle with the marketing part. You know, we have all these ideas and we have a course, we have a membership group, and then we create all the material and then we go to sell it and we go to market it and we feel weird about selling or we don't know where to start. And unfortunately, if it doesn't fly or doesn't launch like we want it to, then a lot of the times people will give up and they'll just say it doesn't work. And I know from my own experiences that that's not the case. It's really having a strong, you have to think about marketing before, you know, or not before, but as you're writing your book, you have to go into it knowing the problems that you're going to solve and then how you plan to let the people know that you have this book or course that can solve their problem. So absolutely. That's why we we actually start week one with the market research and the Mm -hmm. keyword research, because you might have an idea and you think that it's a good idea, Right. But you find from week one that that's actually not people are looking for. Mm-hmm. So it's really understanding that when you write a book, it's not just about your ego. Mm-hmm. That you know, it's not just about oh, I want to write a book and I'm going to show people that I can write a book. It's not that. It's you writing a book and having that dialogue with your readers. Your readers are going to read the book, and if the book doesn't serve them, it's, if if it's not something that would interest them or solve their problems, then they're they're not going to be interested. And when it comes to, I I know I can relate to this in terms of being afraid to sell or not really sure about marketing and so on. For me, as an introvert as well, that's you know that's one of the reasons why I publish my books on Amazon because when you understand how the Amazon algorithm works, 
Amazon is going to promote the book for you. When you have identified the high traffic keywords and the Amazon robots can see that you've put those keywords on your book description and if it's actually reflected in your title and subtitle, when people type in those keywords on the Amazon search bar, as they would because they're looking for that book, and you know, your, your book will come up there, you know, first, you know, on the front page, because it's, you know, it's, it's what they've searched for. You've added those keywords. So that's why for me and and, in my course, you know, uh, the very first week we identified those high traffic, low competition keywords. We do our market research. So the book that you are writing will serve your audience, but at the same time, it's going to help with the algorithm. It's going to help with the marketing and the selling later on. And for me, with the with the launch strategy that I teach inside my course, it's not just you. It's actually you with your launch team and also getting the support of book promotion services so your book gets blasted out to their thousands and thousands of subscribers. You didn't have to build that audience yourself. You know, you're actually leveraging the existing audience of other influencers who are helping you to promote your book. So it's actually perfect for people who are scared of selling because all you have to do is to, to get the support of these influencers or even, you know, get the, the support of book promotion services to help to promote your book and sell your book when you launch. And for me, I'm ju- I just get so thrilled and excited every time my students publish their books. 100% everybody gets to number one because the process works. This it, it does work. The system works, even for the introverts and even for those who have zero background on marketing or sales. Because you are understanding how Amazon works, Amazon will be promoting the book for you if you do it properly. Right. Oh my gosh, so exciting. And it's so wonderful to hear that your students are having such success. I love that. That's so cool. Can you just share a couple of themes that your students have written on that have gone to number one? Of course, of course. Uh, My very first client is actually a CBT therapist. Mm -hmm. Her very first book was about weight loss and and how you can use CBT uh, strategies to to improve your relationship with food. It's not really just about weight loss, to be honest. It's about improving your relationship with food. So that got the number one bestseller. And her next book was about chronic fatigue you know, how to overcome, you know, this uh, loss of energy and and, and stuff like that. So we have chronic fatigue. My recent student right now, she's she's launching this week. You know, she, she's actually number one right now in the vegan and vegetarian cookbook. So she she has a, the first book in her series is like the holidays cookbook. And if you want to try out vegan recipes, you know, for Christmas or for Easter or, you know, for parties and, and special occasions. Yeah, she got the number one bestseller for that. I do have several business coaches as well who are writing about mindset and you know the entrepreneur life you know resilience and stuff like that i have a she's she's writing about how to sell your art without a gallery so i i do have a wide range of students i also had one her book was called women in power so it's it's about empowering women in in business and in, in your profession and and how you could gain confidence and and embrace your self worth as a woman in your field. So I really do get excited about that. A lot of memoirs, you know, a lot of my students actually write about their own story, but I always ask them to find their niche. Mm -hmm. Like, who are you talking to? Who do you want to read your book? So I have one student who wrote about his uh, story where he went homeless. He had a drug addiction problem. So I told him, you know, tap into that, add that in your book description. So for those who are struggling with addiction, those who are struggling with mental health issues, they can relate and identify you as someone who had these issues and, you know, that's someone who actually can cope and and, uh, have a good life, you know, after experiencing all these trauma. 
I have some students. I have a lot of empath students at the moment for some reason. A lot of spiritual healers as well who would like to um, write a book about intuition and how you can follow your intuition in terms of your business or in terms of your life choices. So yeah, absolutely. A lot of different uh, types of books. I have another student who's writing about freelancing like how you could um, launch your freelancing business so you can get more control over your time and have freedom in your life. So yeah, I'm absolutely excited about all these books and just helping them to get it out there. They spend so much time and commitment and and effort to, to write these books. I can see blood, sweat, and tears, you know, poured into these books. And I don't want the books to to just collect, um, I call it like electronic dust <laughs> on on. Amazon, you know, I want the books out there serving their audience. And the way to do that is to understand how to make your books visible, understanding the keyword research, the market research, how to trigger the algorithm so your books will be out there and, you know, to to serve your readers more widely. Wow. Wow. This is just amazing. And you're helping so many people. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. I, I love the range yeah. of the topics as well. It's like, oh, goodness. For, for me, again, as a psychologist and as a university lecturer for all this time, I've supervised so many research projects. And I used to be a qualitative researcher. So I'm used to hearing about stories and, you know, life stories in particular. And now that I'm helping aspiring authors to share their stories and get their books published, you know, I just find that there are parallels. You know, the things that I loved as a university lecturer, I actually get to do it now as a self-publishing coach and, you know, someone who helps uh, other people to map out their ideas, first Mm -hmm. of all, because sometimes it can get so cluttered, you know, they don't know how to organize their thoughts, but to put it in writing and and help them with the marketing and, and the publishing and you know, just to get it on Amazon, you know, I find it really satisfying. And when they get to number one, I just, yeah. you know, I get so ecstatic. It's it's just so exciting for me yeah. as well. Well, that's fabulous. I know you're an incredible coach for these budding authors. I do, I am curious to know a little bit about the type of income that you can make by self-publishing. Can you speak a li- to that a little bit? Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. The thing with the the thing with my launch sequence, and actually some of my students did question this, like what's the rationale for my launch sequence? For the first couple of days in my launch sequence, I asked them to get their books out for free. Mm-hmm. You know, um, because on Amazon you can set your book for free for five days. And they would ask me, why would I do that? I mean, surely we are, you know, writing books to to make a little bit of money, you know, passive income. And I would say, yes, uh, for, for five days, have it for free. And then for the next 10 to 14 days, have it at 99 cents. And then after that, you can have it at 499 or 299, depending on, on the size of your book. Simply because during launch week, your aim is to get your book in the hands of as many people as you can. So if people actually love your book, they've read your book, they're going to tell people about it, they're going to leave reviews for your book. And the more reviews you have on your book, then you know the more Amazon will promote your book in the long term because Amazon would want to identify books that have high traffic, Mm-hmm. and that have impact, you know, that people are actually reading and, and leaving reviews. So for most of my students in the first month, they just break even, you know, because you have free days and then you have 99 cents days and you have an investment in terms of your cover, your editor, you know, your mm-hmm. your formatting and so on. So in the first month, you know, it's it's not surprising to just break even. The, the first month is, it's not, the goal is not to make tons of money. The goal is to get your book in the hands of as many people as you can so they can rave about your book and, you know, and, and share it with others. For me, now that I have three books, every single time it gets to number one, my books, even after two years, I'm still making daily sales from my print, audiobook, and Kindle versions. Audiobooks are doing really well, I have to mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Audiobooks are doing better than the print. These are paying for my bills. You know, um, that's why I had the, the courage to leave my job as a university lecturer because I was empowered to, you know, if my books are paying for my bills, then we're actually fine. You know, right. we're going to live. You know, we're, right. we're going to be fine. And the thing 
about the books as well is that, okay, you'll get income, passive income from the royalties of your books, but because your readers know, like, and trust you because they've read your book, I actually do get clients, you know, one-to-one clients for my coaching practice because they've read my book. So it's not just making money. It's not just getting extra income from the royalty from your books. It's actually attracting new clients into your practice or attracting speaking gigs, for example, because people have read your book. So you can find other ways to make money based on, you know, based on your book. So it's just something to think about, especially for therapists who might be thinking, oh, you know, I haven't got time for that. Or, you know, I'm building my practice. I'm building my business. I haven't got time to write my book. You can actually look at your book as a way. It's, it's almost like a marketing strategy as well. Mm-hmm. Or even if it is just like a, a branding thing, you know, just to raise awareness that you exist <laughs> and that you know your stuff because you've written your book. You know, you can get income, you know, new income streams as a result of you becoming a number one best sell, uh, best-selling author on Amazon. Yeah, this is just so fascinating. I'm, I just my my wheels are spinning right now about hmm, hmm, hmm which I, I can do that. Yeah. I can totally do that. So, I'm just okay. So you you definitely have your 12 week challenge, get it done challenge. Um, you have the online course that's self paced. What else do you offer for folks out there who might want to you know learn more about you and work with you? Sure. Uh, to be perfectly honest you, with you, my favorite is the get it done challenge <laughs> simply because I just love the dynamic. And I love that there is a structure that there is a, a task every week and the students support each other um, over that 12-week period. The easiest for me is the online course because all you have to do is buy the course and that's it. You know, do it on your own. And actually, for, for those students who who buy my online course and it is self-paced, most of them join my free Facebook group. So I have the self-publishing made simple Facebook community. So I have weekly ask me anything live sessions there. Um, just so you know, if if anyone has any questions about writing or self-publishing a book, they come on there and literally ask me anything. But I also do one-to-one coaching. I there was a time, well, most of my one-to-one students, I would offer them the group coaching program or I would offer them the the online course mm-hmm. and they would say, mm, yeah, that's nice, but I, I want a bit of handholding. <laughs> you know, they want that accountability, that one-to-one accountability and support. And what I found was that for those who are working with me one-to-one, they are so determined to make it work. You know, the, my one-to-one clients are really my dream clients because they are so um, motivated. They really want to make it work and, and they invest. You know, I, I tell them, look, it's going to cost you more <laughs> um, if you work with me one-to-one because you're you're essentially taking my time. And they would say, I, I don't mind. You know, I, I want the support. I want that guidance and, and that accountability and yeah, so so that's um that's what I offer as well. But if I if you're going to ask me what's my bias, what's my favorite, mm-hmm. I absolutely love um the 12 week get it done challenge. It's more efficient for you know, cost efficient for my students, but yeah, for those who would like one-to-one support, then yeah, I, I can help in that way as well. Okay. Well, this has just been great. Where do we go to find you? Do you have a, you have a website, I'm guessing. So we'll we'll share that in the show notes. But can you tell us what it is? Yeah, talking. sure. I think the best way for people to connect with me is through Facebook. Okay. They can join the free self-publishing made simple community. Okay. If you want to get to know me first, you know, if you're not just like, who is this? You know, what's she talking about? Is this even real? I mean, is this this? I, I'm not sure if I trust her. You know, I, I I'm not sure if this is true. Come inside and you'll see. Okay. Well, <laughs> you'll I'm see. gonna join. Yeah, I'm gonna yes, join yes. for sure. It's um, you will see that these things don't happen overnight. Um, you will see that a lot of the cases that I've talked about today, you know, people getting to number one bestseller, you can see that they've been working for several weeks. Mm-hmm. And I've been there every week giving them guidance and support 
And when they launch, we all celebrate. So if you want to get to know me and, and really see what's going on, if this is for real, mm-hmm. come and join us in the self-publishing Made Simple community on Facebook. And I go there live every Tuesday, 11 o'clock in the morning. I think that's UK time. I don't know what time it would be in the States. But I do have students in the States who just wake up really early yeah. <laughs> to catch. Or I also have the free downloadable starter kit there as well. So if you just want to know what's involved in writing and self-publishing the bo- a book on Amazon, all of the steps are outlined there. And yeah, you're more than welcome to join us there. Self-publishing made simple community on Facebook. Great. Well, I know what I'm going to do after we end this conversation is I'm going to go be in your group and and just get a sense for how you run it, that your students. I'm so excited that we have had this conversation. I'm telling you, you know, with the state of the world and the way things are shifting and changing so quickly, I know that so many therapists out there are looking for a way to pivot, mm-hmm. an extra, you know, an extra stream of revenue. And so many of us have oh gosh, we could write. We could write and write and write about... Oh, I know. I mean, that, that's why I, I got excited when I when I connected with you as well because yeah. I'm coming from that background. You know, yeah. I'm a psychologist and there's so much that we can offer. And when you have a book, when you have that resource and, and people are going to to read it, you know, and if, and if you make it so practical as well that people can apply the strategies and oh my goodness, the impact that you will make. Yeah. And if people need that extra support, you know, because they've already read your book it would be easier for them to connect with you and and get to know you and if they need that one-to-one support from you as a therapist then you know that's you know that's an extra stream of of income for you aside from the royalties that you get from the book right that's exciting and it's also challenging to think that through i love that i love that so much i love how you've taken something that you are that you're passionate about and that lights you up and you have just turned it into an amazing opportunity, not just for yourself, for, for all the students, all your students that you're helping. So thank you so much for being here. This has just been great. Well, thank you so much. And and I hope that your listeners will find um, value from our conversation today. Oh, I hope so too. I think so. I have a really good feeling about it. <laughs> well, that wraps up another episode of The Therapy Show with Lisa Mustard. I know there are hundreds of thousands of podcasts out there, and I'm thankful you've chosen to listen to mine. Be sure to visit lisamuster.com to access the show notes and discover more fantastic content. And I'd be grateful if you subscribe to the show. Thank you.